What's going on everybody, it's Joel here and today we're taking a look at the Noble All Day Knits. All right, so way back in 2018, these released under the name, the Noble Runners. It was their very first running shoe and it was their only running shoe at the time, at least for a couple years, until they updated the runners with ripstop material on the upper and they called them the ripstop runners. Surprise, surprise. Not too long ago, they went through and they just changed all the names of their shoes. So they kind of went through like a little rebrand, maybe because of the TB12 merger, but the runners got changed to the Aspires. And then the ripstop runners got changed to the all days. And then not too long after that, the aspires got changed to the all day knits. And then you also still have the all day with ripstop. I hope you're not too confused yet, but these shoes are still the same shoes that released in 2018. There have been no updates and I actually did a review of the runners or all day knits, but it was only a written review on my website. So if you go on my website, you can go look up that review and you can see how much that I didn't really like these shoes. I never actually thought that I would be doing a video review on them, but they sent me a pair of shoes to review. So here we go. And I gotta be honest with you, throughout the years, my stance on the all days or the aspires or the runners has lined up a little bit but i still think that these shoes are still in need of some kind of refresh or quality of life upgrades all right so now let's talk about the construction of the all days in the knit material so we have a waffle like design throughout the upper of the shoe which is that knit material there are some panels in the inside to give the shoe some more structure. And then there's a more densely woven area that goes around the toe bumper, around the ridges of the lateral and the medial side, and then extends up at the heel part of the shoe. Those parts are also lined with some kind of backing to them to give the shoe structure. The toe box on the shoe is extremely flexible and the upper on the shoe by Noble standards or on their website is a form fitting upper, but you can also say that it's kind of a narrow fitting material, especially in the toe box. But the saving grace on the shoe is that it's so stretchy in that area that it's not that big a deal, though it's not also the most flattering. I have a huge bunion on my right foot and it sticks out a lot over there. So if you were self-conscious about something like that, then maybe look for the ripstop runners. But anyways, the panels that have the backing are still kind of flexible, kind of stretchy, just not as much as the toe box or even like the middle part of the shoe, which has nothing behind it. At the ankle collar, we obviously have that slip in design. So you have kind of like this tapered opening here and it is Easy to get your foot in and out of this shoe, which I really like, but at the same time, it does have that sock-like design, so it never really feels like your heel is all that secure in this shoe, and that's just kind of the nature of having a sock-like shoe. The lace loops on this shoe are actually attached to that inner lining on the sides of the shoe, so it does do a good job of securing the midfoot, but I do think that they could have added maybe a strap that went around the ankle to help mitigate the amount of heel slip or loose fit in the heel part of the shoe. The laces themselves are a really fat, substantial lace. They remind me of when people used to wear the really fat laces with their Adidas superstars back in the day. Uh, and they look cool, they feel really nice, but I have had issues with them becoming untied. Maybe it's just the way that I tie up my shoes, but these just never really seem to stay tied for me. Now taking a look at the midsole of the shoe, which is the exact same midsole that you're gonna find on both of the ripstop versions and the knit versions. It's a Phylon foam midsole, and it has the same exact design either way you cut it, which is 
actually kind of cool in my opinion. It kind of resembles knurling. And then when you come on over to the medial side, there's always a discolored piece, which signifies the medial post. It's actually a different density foam that protects against overpronation. The foam on the shoe in general is just a more dense feeling foam. It actually makes it feel more of like a training shoe than actually like a running shoe like it originally was supposed to be. And I think throughout the years, people have kind of figured out that these are more of like a light duty training shoe than like a heavier running shoe. Now taking a look at the outsole of the shoe, we have a full length rubber outsole with some pretty deep triangular lugs. There are some areas that have more rubber at the heel part of the shoe and at the toe for more durability but then there is also exposed foam throughout to make the shoe just probably a little bit more flexible and probably decrease the weight. Now, the grip on the shoe has always been really good for me, especially on asphalt, which I'd recommend the shoe for, but given the design and structure of the shoe, I would not take this off road because the shoe just does not hold your foot very well. You can step down and the shoe will actually stick very well, but your foot will go sliding out the side of the shoe. So make sure that you're only using these on flat paved surfaces and not off the beaten path. When I weighed these, I got a men's size 10 and a half in at 11.6 ounces. So not the lightest running shoe, but also not terribly heavy. Now when it comes to sizing your all days in the knit material, I'm gonna recommend that most people can go with their normal training or running shoe size. These size pretty comparable to everything else in Noble's lineup, pretty similar to like most of Nike's shoes. But if you were somebody that had a more narrow foot, then I might actually recommend that you go with a half size down from what you'd wear in your training shoes. The reason for that is these do have a little bit more length to them. And if you can just get around the narrowness of the shoe in general, because you had narrow feet, then I think that you can ditch the space in the toe box by just going with a half size down. But if you're somebody that has average width feet, going with your normal training shoe size is probably gonna be the right move. There's gonna be a little bit of excess room in the toe box, but it's not gonna be anything that's like a deal breaker. Plus you're gonna end up with a little bit more width in the toe box. But if you're somebody that has wide feet, I'd probably just not recommend these shoes in general because they're just, on the form fitting slash narrow side and you have better options even within Noble's lineup for wide feet. You can go with the drives and either the mesh or the knit which are both pretty wide and then you could also go with the ripstop versions which are actually more wide than the knit versions and in that case I would just go with your normal training shoe size. All right now when it comes to actually running in the all days my stance on these shoes has not really changed throughout all the years for running use. These shoes are more on the dense and responsive side, and some people are gonna like that. Personally, I think that they're okay to run in, but you have to make sure that you're running on something that is just flat and pretty evenly paid, because if you go on any kind of slant or like terrain or something like that, you run the risk of your foot spilling out on the side. Even on like a driveway, I misstepped and my foot slid out the shoe and I almost like tweaked my ankle doing that. So you gotta just be aware that you're running on even terrain. Now for comfort, I think that they're generally okay, but that also kind of depends on the person. They're obviously softer than a training shoe. So in that regard, I like running in them but they're not as comfortable as running in an actual running shoe. So when it comes to you know, three to five miles, this is definitely not a shoe that I'm gonna be running in. I guess like one mile, they're gonna be pretty good. One to two to three miles, probably decent enough, but anything longer than that, I don't really see myself running or wanting to run in the all days. And that goes for the ripstop versions as well because it has the same exact midsole, though they might do a little bit better on uneven terrain. Now where these shoes actually do decently well is for walking. I think that these are great 
all day shoes. You can wear them when you coach. You can wear them to just kind of get around the town. The midsole is more on the dense side, but I find that that is not fatiguing for longer walks. I actually prefer a more dense material. If all I'm doing is walking, there's not a lot of impact and I can kind of control how my feet move. Now, the upper, once again, is not the most structured, but if you're just getting around town, then it's probably not a big deal. It's very comfortable, it's flexible, and it's also very lightweight. Now, when it comes to lifting, I tried these out for the sake of science, but I would just not recommend anybody to lift anything heavy in these shoes. I guess if you're doing really light, just slow lifts, maybe bodybuilding exercises, then I think that they would be generally okay. Same thing goes with if you're somebody that just uses machines, then I think that these would be okay as well. But if you're doing anything dynamic, then these are gonna be not so great. And in that case, I would recommend you go for the ripstop material because of the added structure that the shoes have. And even those are not gonna be a great option when it comes to lifting anything besides really lightweight. I use these for some clean and jerks paired with a run the other day and my feet were just sliding all around the shoe. I could never get planted and it was just a really bad situation. I mean, it could have turned out really, really bad, but I have, I think, enough body control and awareness to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, so the All Day Knits got a price reduction from when they first came out. When they first came out, they were $180, and that was pretty expensive, especially back in 2018. Now the All Day Knits are $150, but they raised the price on the Ripstop version to $150 too. So either way you go, it's $150. In my opinion, if you wanted something to work out in, you're gonna to need to go with the ripstop versions over the knit versions. If you needed something to just get around the town in comfortably, you wanted a slip-on coaching shoe, then I think the all-day knits are gonna be a comfortable shoe. These are not my favorite for like just pure running or any kind of lightweight training, just due to the upper just not having enough structure and then the midsole, being more on the dense, dense side makes it not something I want to run in that often. But I mean, if it's a lighter run, I think they're generally acceptable. Though when you compare them to the ripstop versions, which are just a more performance oriented shoe, there's not that many reasons to want to get the knit version. And then also when you throw in the drives that are newly released and are actually a really good running shoe and training shoe, there's a lot less reasons to go with the all day knit. So this is kind of like the last pick in the lineup. They're okay given the use, but you have to know that these are really gonna be limited to just walking around, maybe coaching, and just having just a generally comfortable walking shoe. The all days aren't a bad shoe, but it just kind of depends on the context that you put them in. They are not a good training shoe. They're an okay running shoe, but they're actually a pretty good casual shoe. So if you're looking for a casual walking shoe, then I think the Noble All Days are actually pretty decent. If you guys have any questions about these shoes, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And as always guys, please hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.